On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, we uh, try to fix the root of the Volvo S60's problem. What is going on guys? I'm Watch Chair Go, and today we're here with my 2001 Volvo S60 2.4T. It was $450. Last time we did, what did we do? Oh, the, yeah, the front <laughs> suspension. We did that thing. And uh, we thought we were gonna knock out this whole thing in one day, and that just didn't happen. So today, we've uh, lowered our expectations slightly, and we're gonna tackle one problem and get it done. So today is the PCV, all of it. We're going through this thing, hardcore. So uh, kind of the plan here is to get everything off the front of the engine because PCV on the 2.4T is buried underneath the intake. Thanks, Volvo. So uh, yeah, we're gonna just start taking off stuff. We'll start with the cross brace here, the strut bar, and uh, pull off the boost machine right here. Obviously, this is just the charge pipe, but we're gonna call it the boost bazooka. The boost bazooka. <laughs> the boost bazooka sounds cool, right? We'll just keep digging into this until we get well into the engine bay here and uh, pull off the fuel rail, pull off the intake, and see what we get into. So, we've got a ton of parts here, all from FCP Euro. I have to give a huge shout out to them. Thank you so much for sending us all the parts for this build. Uh, without help from sponsors like FCP Euro, I uh, might not have been able to get out of this car without losing money. <laughs> so, uh, it's just such a nice car that it had to be saved. It's a beautiful car. The interior is in great shape, the exterior is in great shape, the tires have less than 50 miles on them. Oh yeah, they're great. They're they still have the little actually Yes, on less them, than so, 50 yeah. miles. I talked to them again. And, so uh, the root of the problem here, PCV system gets all carboned up, clogs up, and there's a bunch of crankcase pressure and it blows the cam seals out. So we're gonna do the cam seals, and first we have to knock out the PCV before we do the cam seals. Also, uh, the comments were like, hey, make sure you replace the uh, oil cap gasket because it leaks, and guess what? It leaks, I got an oil cap gasket. I do read the comments. You guys do give good advice. Somebody was like, make sure you do that. Somebody was right. There's our decarbon solution. A little bit of CRC brake clean, and it looks good as new. Slide it over the tabs just like that, and you're good. Easy peasy. No more leaks. You can tell it's been leaking for years, and uh, it stopped today. Oh man, nice and solid. Oh yeah, it's super smooth when it goes on. Yeah. 14, 14, here we go. You don't need anything special to pull that guy out, just an 18. Comes apart real easy. And uh, we'll pull this guy off the top engine mount and be good. Right? All right, all right. I think. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put our bolt back. I'm gonna put all the bolts back so I don't lose them. And next to come off is the boost bazooka. We do have to get the boost bazooka off and there's a wire back here. It's gotta come out of its clamp. Got the, there goes the wire. T25 to pull off the boost bazooka. And of course I can't get it in there where I need to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to use a ratchet. Turns out it's a seven for the worm clamp and I'll just back that guy way off. Good to go. Come on, boost bazooka. That one is uh, pointed in a direction that is not conducive to impacts. So we had to use a three inch extension with our seven to get to this clamp. It really depends on how it's positioned on what, what you're gonna be able to do with that. There we go. And Come on. I know I got that clip off. There, there we go. you go. Yeah, a little bit of oil in there, but not too bad. All right, now we're gonna pull the fuel rail cover. What's that guy? 27? Oh, it's a 30. Yep. That came off quick. All right, all right, all right. The fuel injector connectors, just push in like that and then lift and maybe give them a little wiggle. Obviously you don't wanna break them or anything else. So a little wiggle. Yeah, just got a couple drops out of it. Perfect. In our case, this engine hasn't ran in like three days now, four days. Yeah. So there's no pressure on the rail. That's always a bonus. Super fast right there. All right. Set our bolts aside. It's starting to move a little bit. Perfect. All right, did we do it? Look at that, we got all the O-rings out at once. Two, three, four, and five. It's kind of like winning the lottery. Did you go buy lottery tickets? I did. All right, I don't think you actually did, but we're going. You're right, I didn't. <laughs> Let's go, we gotta go. And now we can get to this hose that we have to pull off. Let's get the fuel line disconnected real quick while we're in here. 
push this guy in. Disconnect tool. There it goes. Perfect. Didn't lose too much fuel there. A couple drips. We won't show Josh though, because he's in his pajamas. Oh, whatever. Those are his work pajamas, obviously. <laughs> he, he's out in the shop. They're my Sunday pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get our fresh air tube off the air box. Throw it over there. That basically just falls in and out, so no big deal. I did remove the lock from the fuel line. I'm gonna put it over here. Well, that was cool. Did that just go down the bazooka tube? <laughs> uh, I'll get that out of there. Slide the dipstick out. We'll do a little cleaning on that guy. Yeah, look, That's... we're good on oil. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we checked the oil out. We had to change the camera batteries, so let's install some wiper blades. Got some brand new blades for the front of this thing here. Another one. There we go, we're good. Funny, I, I feel fulfilled now. Yeah, car's done, wipers are in. We're trying to wiggle this one off, but this hose is pretty rough. All right, there it goes. It sounds like it kind of broke loose. Don't ruin this hose. I don't think we have a replacement for it. That, that one's kind of important. Yeah, we do have a replacement for this one, I think. Yes. This upper hose we have in our kit here, and I might just destroy it. Let's see if I can get it out of here at all. You might need a little persuasion. There we go, I just pulled really hard. There you go. So, no problem. That hose is out. There's just a lot of carbon in this thing. The upper ones actually have to get pulled, I think. Now for the test. I got the bottom two loosened up. There's, there must be one more hiding in the corner there. So there's a bolt down here. Getting on it is probably like the hardest thing you may ever do. You're gonna need your swivel to bind up a little bit. And you can just barely see it. You'll definitely have to give up on your impact for this last bolt. Uh, we had to get two extensions and the swivel and the 10 and go straight in like this, underneath the power steering pump and these coolant hoses and everything. Gabe's pulling off our 17 millimeter banjo bolt from underneath with the ratchet wrench. Uh, good thing it's a uh, articulated ratchet wrench there because there's Ooh. no other way to do that. Maybe a stubby. A stubby would work. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But it's definitely a yeah, weird. And you kind of got to hold the intake up to do it. On the 2.4T, we had to pull this hard line for the power steering because uh, there's really no way to get the intake past it. So uh, it was easy enough. Take a 17, pop that guy loose, and then carefully wiggle it out because there is an O-ring in there. You got to make sure that all receipts properly. But now we can move this wherever we need. Okay. I say that, I forgot to undo the uh, throttle body. So, let's oh. get back under there. Yep, there'll be just one, should be yep. just one harness. Yeah, and there's a clamp on the throttle body, I think. There it is, so get this harness off, get the throttle body off, and we can get the whole thing out. This was a nightmare. The connector for the throttle body is down there in front of the starter, but you can't get it off without taking off this like bracket by the starter because it's a big old six pin connector like that big and you have to work it out of there and there's no way to get it through. So we had to unbolt the throttle body off the bottom of the intake while the intake was still in the car basically. And uh, yeah, that took a long time. Uh, now we've got it apart, we can swap out the PCV. You can finally see the PCV canister and uh, we're gonna make sure this banjo bolt and everything is clear of carbon. Pull this guy out of here. There's copper crush washers on it. So we're going to be careful and not drop them. Okay, one's on the banjo bolt, one's on there. We're good. And we'll clean that up with some brake clean and uh, then we'll clean out this line. There's two tins holding on the canister. Yep. So we're gonna start pulling it off. I'm really impressed with these valves. I know, the engine looks really nice. It really does. This job seems like it's not gonna be a big deal and you start on it and you're like, man, we're flying through it. And then as time goes on, it gets longer and longer. <laughs> And long. So that's uh, just like ours. Yeah, we found some uh, clamps down in here, buried down in here, and they were what, T25s? Ish. T25s. And that's the last thing holding on the PCV canister in here. So I'm going to wiggle and pull. And I think I'm making some headway here. Ah! All right, there's the headway we needed. So now I have to get this hose out, drop the hose from the, to the throttle, the clamp to the throttle body there just fell. Okay, so we got this off. Look at, look at all that carbon. Holy. That thing is toast. Wow. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. We 
but it's just completely clogged. Oh yeah, just pry them out of there in chunks. There is nothing, <laughs> nothing no, getting through that. No wonder the thing blew out the cam seals. Oh my gosh. All right, we're gonna keep grinding on here. We're gonna get in there with a vacuum and just keep ripping out all this carbon. Gabe's been having fun with the old PCV box here. But that's just the carbon he knocked out of that guy. Just a little bit. We should have cut it in half or something. Dude, that's just from the inlet. Yeah. So we got our new one here and we've got our air hose here. We're gonna make sure that we can get some uh, air passed through this guy here. You can hear it. So we don't have to drop the oil pan. That is a huge plus because we were already really far into this job. We're taking off that intake bolt right there. We can put on our new gasket now. I'm gonna temporarily put that back while I clean up the mating surface. We're just gonna use a little brake clean on a rag to make sure this is uh, exceptionally clean and then uh, throw everything back together. It's go time. Oh, we do need to try to clean out this little line. So we're gonna take something, a little bit of wire and clean out the banjo bolt. Yes. Shaky, shaky. That is much prettier. No shaky. So we got everything clean. It took a little while. Brake clean, cleaned up the throttle body, cleaned up the uh, intake mating surfaces. The intake gasket is on. We're ready to put the new PCV on. Gabe's gonna slide it into position here. Do your magic. And then we will be ready to uh, bolt that thing in with its two tens. Clamp down all of our Otiker clamps, or Otiker clamps. Otika pliers, Otika clamp. No worm gear or anything like that. These simply clamp on right there. And give it a squeeze. Yep. That's it. When you squeeze right there, it'll press sucks up against together. that and it sucks together and done. Getting everything put together here. Throttle buddy's going back on. And now I turn the clamp for the intake tube so that I can easily get it on without having to fight through this. Uh -huh. So I've got all the tins started here. There we go. Gabe just did the contortionist thing, got the banjo bolt back in, that was a lot of fun. Uh, of course the intake dropped right back on and I just got the intake pipe reconnected and Gabe's tightening down that uh, seven. Then all we have to do is hook up a few more lines. We can uh, tighten the intake up here in a second, start putting our fuel injectors back, put this power steering line back, power through it, we're getting it done. We've got our intake all on. Uh, the bolts are started at least by hand. We're gonna go ahead and finally start to run these guys down a little bit here so that we'll have a little, little bit of a clamping force. There's one click. I did manage to get this one started and it will take like a half hour to tighten by hand. So I'll just be over here grinding away. I am going to go ahead and get this power steering line back in place. Slide it back into the pump where it belongs. Start tightening it down. And we're just gonna keep tightening it down. Little, little happy amounts right there. Uh huh. All right, Bob. And now our dipstick can go back in. And what did I do with the bolt for that? I had it 10 seconds ago. Nope, those are the fuel rail. I just set down the bolt for the, oh, here it is. Oh, the bolt's right there. Oh yeah, you found it. Yeah, incredible. So I'm here for you. All right, so I'm gonna snake that back down in there. So now we're ready for our uh, fuel rail. We're gonna replace all the O-rings on the injectors. It is nice that they're ripping every time. Yeah. We got all of our O-rings swapped out here, a litany of new O-rings. And uh, to put these on, I'm just gonna go ahead and go like that. Push just a little bit. And these have a little slot. And the slot is locked in by this rail here. And this rail should only fit on one direction. And that direction is not that direction. So it goes on just like this. Yeah, every bit of this should lock into place as you slide it on. So there's three T25s that hold the uh, little clip onto the fuel rail here. And now we can go ahead and set our fuel injectors in here carefully, a big wiggle, and a push. And there we go, they're going in. Awesome. Okay, we can hook up our fuel line quick disconnect we are done for the day on this. Usually we'd keep going, button everything back up, put the covers back on, and put the boost bazooka back in place. But on this job, we are not done. We, tomorrow, we tear off the entire side of the engine. We gotta get these out of the way. We gotta get the cover off the timing belt. All the covers off the timing belt. We gotta take the crank pulley off. We got a lot of work to do tomorrow. We have to take all this apart over here. So today, we're gonna stop with what we can technically stop with. So that is 
putting these injectors back on. And sure, it could run now. I know we could fire it up if we wanted to, but uh, we're not gonna do that. We're going to, there we go, got that one to clip in. Just get the injectors back on. Everything's back in place as well as it can be for now. Uh, and then tomorrow, we just keep taking this car apart. It took a few hours. So uh, I'm sure this will take quite a few more hours, honestly. And we have to kind of rotate it until we get this thing GDC, align all the cam gear marks and all that good stuff. But we're gonna get it done. Another fun night of work on the Volvo knocked out and uh, hopefully only one more day and this car can move on down the road to its next owner. So that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do and I will talk to you next time. It's gonna be one really reliable car when it's done. That's the problem. Yeah, it's, it's built like a tank. It is built like a tank. Yeah. But Sometimes. honestly, I've, I've worked on tanks. They're, yeah. they're easier to work on than this thing. <laughs>